All right, I'm feeling pretty good about where our model is and uh, evaluating the, the model on the test data set here. Let's go ahead and wrap things up. So we'll say in conclusion. So in conclusion, we, uh, we achieved a, let's see, what was our accuracy up here? Doop, 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 doop. Say like 94.7, let's round up to 95, 95% accuracy on the test data set using a logistic regression model with these model parameters. And for our model parameters, um, you know, we can do actually is we can just come up here and we can copy this. And this has all the model parameters in there right for us. So we'll do a little code block here. We'll paste that in there. And uh, that is it. So I want to say to you, congratulations on finishing a data science, data science classification uh, mini project on the Iris data set. This really is a classic data set um, for people getting into data science, getting into machine learning. And you've now gotten to walk through uh, not only doing some models using scikit-learn, which a lot of people will point you to immediately, but you can also see just how modeling is basically um, a function that maps inputs to outputs. And to get an idea about what it's doing, you can define stuff manually and you can play around with it and you can see, okay, what kind of accuracy can I get if I'm just making these predictions? Um, you saw why it's important to train your model on different data than you evaluate your model on. That's a really, really key, key point of all data science. Um, using the, the train test split, using your validation set, and really using cross-validation is going to be one of, the, one of the most key things that you can do there. You learned how we can plot the data here to see which things we're misclassifying and create a nice plotting function. So this is something that I'll do all the time, is I'll create a, a utility function that helps me see how well my model is doing. And then you can use that throughout, you know, kind of throughout the rest of your model building process. And um, there are a couple things that you can continue to do with this project if you want. You can check out other types of models like, uh, like decision trees and random forests and other, other kinds of models like that. If you want to play around with different model parameters other than the regularization parameter, uh, you can do that. There's one way of looking at how well your model is doing called a confusion matrix. Um, I'll just Google that really quickly. This is a big thing that a lot of people use, which can definitely be good to look at. It's essentially saying, you know, I predicted this, but it was actually this. Let's count all of those times that we made a mistake and let's let's put them in a grid and see if we're making some kinds of mistakes more than other kinds of mistakes. So that's another great little homework thing that you can do if you want to continue down this, this project. But uh, all in all, congratulations on finishing this. And there's definitely a lot more learning for you to do, but I hope that you've gotten a taste of how by just digging in by by being in the code, by being in the data, how you can learn so much faster and how you can have a much better time doing it as well. And at the end of it, you've got something to show. You know, you can you could uh, take this Jupyter notebook and put it on a website. You could put it in GitHub, which is um, you know we use Git for version control for a lot of other courses on the website um, on project data science. And so you could you could showcase this work if you wanted to. You could send it to friends or or uh, put it on your resume, you know, show it off to show it off to people. So I hope that you have learned a lot and had a good time. 
And uh, thank you so much for doing this course. All right. See ya.